Jesus. Jesus. song says come and do what only you can do there are things that nobody can actually fix in your life for you except the fire starter comes into your life and that fire starter is right here today so i want you to open your mouth and sing that song because you really mean it come and do what only you can do please help me sir for you shut up ali brahan this And here we're going to be praying for revival this morning. But when we talk of revival, I, I could go into telling you a whole treaty or discourse on what revival is. But we, that's not what we're going to do here this morning. But I want to tell you that revival starts with a spark. It starts with a fire. And that is why I'm telling you that the fire starter is here this morning. And whatever revival would mean to you, that fire begins here this morning. And it will grow into a flame. And it will become an inferno. And it will engulf your life. And it will last your lifetime. That is what revival is. If you look in scripture, revival always starts with God. Descending to meet with man. I'm talking about Moses right now. Moses was in the wilderness, in the back bush. And he was busy standing after the sheep of Jethro. And he saw the bush, it was burning, but it was, it was not consumed. And Moses went for there and said, let me see what marvelous sight is this. And he was standing on holy ground that morning. And you are standing on holy ground. Amen. And I want you to recognize you're standing on holy ground this morning. And Jesus is here with us to touch, to transform, and to change things. Not just for the moment, but for a lifetime. We are here for you. 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 Lord, I am here for you. I leave behind the weight of troubles. I leave behind all of my parents, all of my wants, all of my fears. I leave them behind. Fire is here this morning. 
this morning. It is not just fire, it is the glory of God. It is the glory of God. And that fire will go with Moses throughout his ministry. That same fire was the pillar of cloud in the day. Was the pillar of fire at night. Going ahead of Moses' ministry. That same fire was the rock that produced water. That same fire was the mother that fell from heaven. That same fire, an experience that started at just the back bush in the wilderness. Lasted a lifetime. That is revival. So I want you to lean into the into the fire this morning. Leave your problems behind. In Jesus' name we pray. Just a moment, beloved. We are talking about the glory of the latter house. And let me tell you something. Yes, the latter house means there was another house. It actually means a temple that was rebuilt. There was a former temple that was destroyed and made desolate. And then a new temple comes. And God is promising that the glory of this new temple will surpass the former. But it tells me something. That in God's journey with you, it can only get better. Let me explain. Sometimes you might think you are going through the valley. But as I was sitting there listening to Pralauli, the Lord says, I am a God of better outcomes. It might seem you are going through the valley, but God is producing something, a far big weight of glory that exceeds the former. That is what God is preparing. Are you ready to lean into the fire this morning? Oh, God of a better outcome. So what, where are you in your life's journey? Are you in the valley? Even David will say, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because you have prepared a table before me. Beloved, put these words on your lips this morning and begin to confess God. Confess the God who starts a revival that would last a lifetime. That revival is beginning here this morning. Do not leave this place without that spark of fire within you. They put up a hand and say, Tell me, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the translation, Brother already says, The glory of the latter will eclipse the former. What have you seen? What have you known before? But in this revival, the latter is going to be greater. You have not seen anything yet with God. So I want you to come into covenant with God this morning and say, Lord, on this glory of the latter, I came to it. And you know what God was actually doing? It was a covenant. And this is a covenant that God lays out the terms. And all you do is just to step into the terms of that covenant. See, God is on the move. And he needs people who will key into his move. We are not the ones who are going to spark revival for God. God has an agenda. And he needs you and me to step in and partner with him. He has an outcome. But it's a privilege for you to be a vessel. To step into the same move with God. And when you begin to read about those big men of God. Moses, you are talking about the prophets, and even in our time, you begin to talk about T. L. Austin. We talk about uh, uh, what, what do you call their names? Wesley, Finney. We are talking about the Azusa Street revival. These were men who keyed into the plan of God, and it became a great outcome for generations. It outlived them, and that is the revival I want us to seek from God this morning. It's a revival that is not momentary. It's not just in time and it disappears. It's a revival that will engulf your life. And let me read from a guy. And maybe I can set the pace for what we're going to be doing here for the entire seven hours we have. A guy I'm reading from chapter 2. It says, The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace. But there was a house before. 
and maybe I can lay a bit of history. We're going to pray. It's time for prayer. But let's talk about what has happened before now. The temple, the former temple was destroyed. The children of Israel were taken in exile to Babylon. But the Lord raised kings after kings. Cyrus, Darius, Xerxes, kings after kings who keyed into the agenda of God for the Israelite and they returned to their former place. And when they returned to their former place, the Bible says they laid the foundation of the temple in Ezra. If you read in Ezra, it says when they laid the foundation, the people sang. And the song they sang was, you are good for your goodness. Your mercy endures forever. And that was the exact same song they had sung when Solomon laid and sacrificed. They sang that song again. God is good to you. It means God is never changing. Your circumstances may look a bit different from what it was, but God is not changing. It's just a situation that is, is mushrooming and going to a better outcome for you. And they rebuilt the house. When they had laid the foundation, I was reading historical documents. It says when they had laid the foundation and they started building, they paused for 14 to 16 years. And the people began to build houses for themselves. And this is when Haggai came up. And in Haggai chapter 1 verse 4, is it, is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses? And this temple lies in ruins. Is it time for you to look after your own business and you forget the legacy of God that you will transmit to your children from generation to generation? Is it time to settle and just mind business and employment and finances and that is all you care for? Is that all to life? But God is saying, is it time for you to dwell in your luxury home when you forget the temple? The temple, you are the temple, you are the tabernacle. Is it time to, to look after fleshly desires and you forget what will last eternally? Is it time? And because of all this, you know what happened? He says, you have sold, but you bring in little. You eat, but you do not have enough. You drink, you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourself, but none is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag of holes. But the Lord says in verse 8, Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build a temple, that I may take pleasure in it and glorify myself in it, says the Lord. And so, Lord, this morning we key into your covenant. Lord, this morning we lay behind desires of the flesh. We lay behind ambitions. We lay behind, you know, our, our propensity to achieve. We lay them behind. Jesus says this is how the Gentiles think what they will eat what they will drink what they will wear but he says seek first the kingdom and all those things so Lord this morning we come to the place of worship Lord we key into your covenant and we go to the mountains and we begin to put together roots we begin to put together resources for this temple in the name of Jesus Lord, we ask that you will set this life ablaze. Lord, we lay ourselves as sacrifice on the altar this morning. Set these lives ablaze in the name of Jesus. We are sacrifice on your altar this morning. And in chapter 2 verse 3, it says, Who is left among you? Who saw this temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now in comparison with it? Is this not what your eyes oh sorry it says is this not in your eyes as nothing verse 6 for thus says the lord of hosts once more it in a little while i will shake heaven and earth and the sea and dry land and i will make all nations and they shall and i will shake all nations and they shall come to see the desire of nations and i will fill this temple with glory says the lord but in zechariah because Zechariah and Agai are somewhat together. In Zechariah chapter 1 verse 14. He says, I am zealous for Jerusalem. And for Zion. He has great zeal. The Lord is zealous about you. He is actually jealous about you. And he has intention to revive you. And what this revival, what does it mean to you? 
It's not just a momentary change in time that will last for a short time. Like I told you. God has intention to step into your life and change things turn around everything it will eclipse all of your previous achievement all of your former glory it's going to eclipse it because god is taking over and what we're talking about the revival we're talking about is not stagnant it's a flowing stream it's a flowing stream and i want you to step into it it's a flowing stream. While Brother Bra Bra Laulu was talking, I received the word. It says it's a flowing stream. It's not a stagnant phenomenon. It moves from glory to glory unto perfection. It is a torrent drenching everything in its part. Are you ready to step in this morning? I am here. Lord, we are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Go and do what you do. Set us free. The Lord, we're going to pray for the next twenty minutes. However, you're going to pray, but I wanted to lean in this morning. I wanted to lean in this morning into the stream step into water this morning let the fire engulf you this morning let the stream take you along in its path this morning the lord i wanted to open your lord and begin to pray this morning lord we need revival lord we need revival the revival that starts in your family the revival that moves beyond the boundaries of your family the revival that goes into the life of your neighbors the revival that goes ahead of you into the streets until the whole city is engulfed lord start a revival in me start a revival in me lord i lay myself down i re I, I look into the covenant and i lay my hands upon the covenant lord this morning thank you jesus thank you jesus Revival in your spiritual life. Revival in your relationship with God. How is it your relationship with God? What has it become? Is it a drop connection that you are not eager? Every morning when you wake up, you are not eager. It's like a lot of weight upon you to even go through your Bible. You do it just to tick the box. How is your relationship with God? This is where revival is going to begin. Revival can never happen and leave your relationship with God unattended to. This is where revival begins. So brothers, sisters, I wanted to lean in this morning and say, Lord, I come to the heart of worship. It's all about you. I come to the place of total surrender. I come to the place of yieldedness. I am yielded to you for this revival that you are beginning again. Lord, start a revival this morning. Start a revival in Calgary. Start a revival in my home. In my home. Let my home be an altar. Let my home be an altar. Let my home be an altar. Let my home be a temple. You know, Jacob got to the place where he calls the land Bethel. He says, Is the house of the Lord? Is your home the house of the Lord? Is your home the house of the Lord? Can you build a temple in your home? Can you build a temple in your home? Can you build a temple in your home? 
The Lord, you need to build a temple in your home. The Lord dwells in temples. Holy grace, holy tabernacle, holy vessel. Build a temple in your life and in your family. Build a temple. Shata lebrahando satala. Enko soto lebrahande shate. Malike dosa brahande kulibratus. Lord, build a temple. Lord, build a temple. Lord, I partner with you in the work of the kingdom. Lord, I partner with you in the work of the kingdom. I go ahead to bring in the resources. Lord, to rebuild this temple. Shabbat shalom, satire. It says, build every broken earth. Build it back together. The Lord who said, any altar that is broken, begin to put it back together. Elijah, put back the altar. Put back the altar. Put back the altar. And pour water. Pour fuel. Pour gas into the altar. Let fire begin again on that altar. In the name of Jesus, you need the fire of the Holy Ghost on that altar. And the Bible says, this fire must not go out. Puts the altar back together. This is where revival begins. Put the altar back together in your home. Put the altar back together in your life. And let's go bring the fuel and the fire upon that altar and it begins to burn and you become a priest that is who you are the bible says he has raised us as a kingdom of priests that means we have a duty to perform daily in our lives we are priests so what is your priestly your priestly heritage like tonight or to this morning what is your priestly heritage like you are a priest Put the altars back together. Lord, in whatever way the altar is broken, in whatever way I have stepped out and the edge is broken, I return this morning. I return this morning. I'm putting back the altar. I put back my life together so that God, you can inhabit this temple in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Beloved, you know something? The Bible talks about uh, the descendants of Levi. In Psalm, I think it's Psalm 86. When they came together after the return, they, they said, Lord, will you revive us again? That is a prayer. Will you revive us again? That They were hungry, but they need the fire starter to step in. Will you revive us again? Beloved, I wanted to put that on your lips this morning. What do you need revival on? Is it ministry? Is it your marriage? Is it your finance? Is it your spiritual life? Whatever it is, come into the fire this morning. And you know what that fire is? It says the fire burned, but those three children were not consumed. Instead, the fourth man stepped into the same fire with them and comforted them. And from that place forward, they became eminent people in Babylon. Fire and the disciples they gathered. The Bible says it was the little rush of a mighty wind, and it settled on their heads are cloven tongues of fire. The fire is the presence of God, the temple is where God manifests his presence. Without the temple, there is no Jerusalem. The temple is Jerusalem, Jerusalem is the temple. And that temple signifies God's presence. And let me tell you something. When the temple and God is in that place, you do not need to navigate anymore. When God is in your temple, you don't navigate. The Bible says the priests, when they gathered and they began their ordinances, God stepped into the arena. And you know what happened? He suspended the priest and God took over. That is what you need. God comes into your life and he orchestrates everything. And all you are doing is living out the script that God has written. And you know, when you live out the script God has written, the outcome is always good. Lord, start revival in us. Start a revival in us. Lord, we are hungry for this revival. 
Moses said, we have dwelt on this mountain long enough. We have had enough of all this. It is becoming still. You will have to move from glory to glory. If the glory that was on the face of Moses was good, was really splendid, he says the glory that comes is much better. So you have to move. Move with God. Oh, Shatali Brahanda Satan. You don't have a lifetime to live out the old and the same weight of glory. You don't have a lifetime to do that. So let's move with God. The Lord has an agenda. The Lord has a mission. And he needs men who will step in together with him. This is revival. And your life is changed. It's transformed from the inside out by the same God. And so beloved, I want you to step into this fire. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Shut up, Abraham. Just one passion. Shut up, Abraham. One purpose. One passion. To know you more and more. Shut up, Abraham. Shut up. When I know you, you, Jesus, I found me just one purpose, one passion. Just one purpose, just one purpose, one passion that I may know you. One purpose, Paul says that I may know you. That's all. That's to all. Know That's all. You and that is the revival. Just one purpose, one passion to know you, oh God. When I know you. Shatali Brahandis. One passion. Just one passion. Kasali Brahandis Shataya. One purpose. Sham Brahandis. To know you. Thank you, Jesus. And more. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, when I know you, Lord. When I know you. Sham Brahandis. I find me. What, what we have been struggling to discover is to find our feet that's all we have been trying to do in this world but that song lays the foundation you know in Paul's life up till the point where he met Jesus he had accumulated degrees and credentials and so many things he put together and he says even concerning zeal I persecuted the church because I thought I was doing the right thing but when I met Jesus he says what things were gained to me these i have counted loss for christ yet indeed i also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of jesus my lord for whom i have suffered the loss of all things and i count them as rubbish that i may gain christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is from the law but that which is from faith in christ and righteousness which is from god by faith and it says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering and being conformed to his death if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead not that I have already attained or I'm already perfected but I press it and I lay hold that I may lay hold on that for which Christ also has laid hold on me brethren I do not count myself to have apprehended but one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead i press forward to the goal for the prize of the upward call of christ what is your passion what is your purpose i think if we get those that right we'll have revival i want to know you and I am calling you to the place of intimacy, to the place of relationship with God. 
to the place where you know God. The Bible says Moses spoke with God face to face like a man will converse with his friend. What more can you have? Lord, I want to know you. The experiences we have had yesterday, yes, yeah, it's been good enough, but we want to know you. Just one passion. One passion. The Lord put this on your lips and pray. Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you. Shiprahande Sekata. Just one passion. I'm outside you. Shatali Brahandes. No one beside you. Thank you, Jesus. Let me know you more and more. Oh, when I know you, I find just one passion, just one passion. One passion. From this place I have to another land. Lord, I want to see you. When I know you, I want to know you. I want to see you. What does one passion? Just one passion. The Lord, make this your heart, your heart cry this morning. Make this your heart cry this morning. Lord, I want to know you. You see, when you know God, you can be tossed around by corny craftiness and fables of men. You cannot because you know God. And you know when you know God, you can pass this legacy on to your children. Our children are asking those questions. Our children are checking what exactly is this God you talk about. In some families I have heard that their children are questioning the faith. The faith of their fathers. Because there is no material evidence. And it's not the fault of the children. It's the fault of we the parents. We have not known God. So there is nothing to pass to the children. It breaks my heart. Ah. Surrender. 
you know beloved when i read the history of the israelites when i read their history i just see how they were transferring god from generation to generation and Moses would talk to the generations coming after him and Joshua would talk to the generations coming after him Abraham did the same for Isaac and when you go into the book of Hebrews chapter 11 it talks about the heroes of faith but do you know that the heroes of faith was actually a story of transference of covenant from generation to generation it says Abraham stepped out looking for a city whose builder was God and, Moses, and Sarah goes with him and the Bible says Sarah would not look after the deadness of her womb she went by faith and it says Moses Moses he, he forsook to be called the sons of Pharaoh's daughter and he went ahead because he saw the invisible time will fail me to talk about Barak to talk about Gideon to talk about Samuel of David he says by faith there were women who received their dead back to life he says some shot them out of lions and some people quenched the fire the fire the fieriness of fire faith Thank you, Jesus. Brethren, can you just pray? Lord, put oh, a of fire on the tongues of people. I was resisting it, but I'm sorry. Can you raise your right hand to the Lord? Everybody, please, if you can stand up on your feet. Can you pray, Lord? I saw while he was speaking now, I just saw coals of fire on tongues of people. I wanted to, I was telling, I wanted to hold back, but I couldn't hold it back. Can you raise your right hand and talk to the Lord? Lord, I receive my coal of fire now. For my children, receive it now. Can you talk to the Lord? Somebody open up your mouth and talk to the Lord. Somebody open. Just pray, 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 pray. Can you raise your voice and pray to the Lord? Lord, I receive calls of fire. Can you receive it now? Can you receive it now? Can you receive it now? 